His Cincinnati Reds debut four innings of one hit shutout baseball. For Scooter Jeanette, back to back three hit games, three runs batted in, has homered in four in a row. The Reds try to make it five straight tonight. Well, it's been some weird weather here in L.A. We have had clouds, we have had rain and chilly temperatures each of the last two days. No different tonight. But we will play baseball. The Reds and the Dodgers from historic Dodger Stadium. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welch and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to Reds Baseball. Trying to make it five in a row here tonight. And also trying to make it five in a row, that is with a home run, is second baseman Scooter Jeanette. Boy, you know, I saw him in, in the lobby of the hotel earlier today. He said, what a difference it makes when you finally get healthy and you feel 100%. He didn't realize how much his sore shoulder affected his swing. He thought it was only affecting his throwing. Well, obviously, when you get healthy, he starts swinging the balls and he starts hitting those pitches that he gets, and now he is on some kind of a roll. All right, let's turn our attention to the matchup tonight. It has been a struggle recently for Reds right-hander Homer Bailey. You know, early in the year, Homer pitched some ball games that were pitched well enough that he really could have been a winning pitcher in those games had the Reds given him any kind of offense. Lately, hasn't been the case. Nine home runs in the last four starts. For me, that all comes from fastball command. He's got to be on the periphery of the strike zone. He's got to be down when he wants to be down. When he comes inside, he can't miss over the inner third. He's got to miss in off the plate. His fastball was a little bit quicker last time out, a little bump into speed. We'll see if he can do that tonight. Ross Stripling is a right-hander. He's only pitched a couple of times as a starter earlier this year, but he's going to be in the rotation uh, for the near future until the Dodgers finally get their starting rotation healthy. So game three of this series coming up. Reds to mind to make it three straight over the Dodgers having lost here for eight straight games coming into this series. And when we come back, we'll check in in the dugout with Jim Day and talk about the red hot Cincinnati starting pitching.
Chevy Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good, it's Skyline time. Reds playing much better baseball of late, and really the tale of two teams going in different directions since April 23rd. Reds 500 baseball, 6 and 12 for the Dodgers. The Reds scoring nearly five and a half runs per game. The team averages up, and the bullpen ERA at a cool 3.57. But as we know, it all starts with starting pitching during this four game winning streak for the Reds. It has been good starting pitching, and you can look right to that. Your RIGS bringing the energy tonight. Let's go back to Luis Castillo's start in this one, and it was five and two thirds innings, just two earned runs, seven punch outs, and Romano against the Mets on Wednesday, just one earned run. Malley, no earned runs, and man, did he ever battle through five innings of pitching, and last night, a terrific Reds debut by Matt Harvey, a combined 1.31 ERA, opponents hitting just 149. Here's the skipper, Jim Riggleman, on his starters of late. If, you, if your starting pitching is is giving you innings and uh, you know gets you into the sixth, seventh inning, you um, you're going to have success. You know you can kind of line your bullpen up the way you want to. If your um, if your uh, starters are, are not getting you to that point, it's you know your hit or miss from that point. But our, our starters have done a good job. You know it's really really nice to see these uh, young guys. Uh, do what they've done their last time through and, and then to see Matt what he did yesterday is, is really encouraging. Jim Riggleman would like to see a successful completion of that five man rotation. It's up to Homer Bailey tonight as the Reds go after their fifth straight win. Dodgers team this weekend. They had an alumni game today and boy, some household names on that team. And reliving some of those games and that five game series win over Oakland was quite a treat before the ball game today. All right, Red Legs come in 12 up, 27 down. Winners of four in a row. Their lineup presented by Nissan. Winker in right, Peraza and Votto. Jeanette, Suarez, Shevler in center tonight. A ladder third of Tucker Barnhart, Adam Duvall in left batting eighth, and Homer Bailey on the mound bats ninth. Starting at four, the Dodgers, 28 year old native Texan, drafted in 2012 out of Texas A&M is Ross Stripling. Uh, primarily a breaking ball pitcher is strict Stripling. He's not a guy that's going to throw the fastball by. He averages a little bit below 93 on the fastball, but a lot of sliders, a lot of curveballs, and uh, quite a few changeups. So. 
The Reds will be looking off speed for the most part tonight. Strike one to Jeremy, to Jesse Winker, the home plate umpire is Jeremy Rehack. I beg your pardon. So Winker, a ground ball to the right side. That'll be gobbled up. And the play made at first base. And that is out number one to begin the ball game. And that is a third baseman, by the way, who made that play on the big shift. Defensively for the Dodgers, Hernandez, his first start of the series. Peterson out and left, and Kemp moves over to right. Muncie, Taylor, Utley, and Bellinger third to first, and the first start in this series for Austin Barnes, replacing Yasmani Grandal. Peraza down a strike. Hosea, 278, two home runs, 10 runs batted in. One for six so far in this series through the first two games. You may remember he did not start the first game. A rare day off indeed for the Reds. Jose Peraza, beautiful breaking ball yeah. there. Stripling's one of the few pitchers out there that will use a slider and a curveball a lot in the same game. Normally what happens for a starting pitcher is that you warm up in the bullpen and you realize only one of them is working on that night. So you stay stubborn enough that you keep using the one that's not working until maybe it it comes around later in the game. He's already thrown a really good slider to get Winker on a ground ball and drop that old Lord Charles curveball right in there on Peraza. Reds took the series opener four to one and we made mention it snapped an eight game losing streak to the Dodgers. And a nine gamer here in Los Angeles. In fact, the Reds have not beaten the Dodgers in a series in a long, long time, spanning the last seven they played. The Dodgers going into this series have beaten the Reds 17 out of 21. But now Jim Riggleman's team, very impressive the first two nights here. You know, we may know that stat because we were fed those in that sure. information, Tom, but I don't think the players have any clue. A lot of these guys haven't been around since 2015. You know, you may have some holdovers, but for the most part, they're looking at this Dodger team as eh, maybe not really that good this year. They've been beset by injuries. Maybe the Reds are catching the Dodgers at the right time, but they have not been impressed in one bit here in the first couple of games of the series. And for that matter, the first month of this season, month plus now, as the Dodgers come in six games under 500, 16 up, 22 down. They really fought a break the last couple of days where the Diamondbacks for the first time all year of long have lost three in a row. If you're a young player, especially if you're a player that's only been at Dodger Stadium once or twice, you believe what you see, not what you read. Two down for Joey Votto, average up to 283, five home runs, 21 batted in for Votto. On base percentage of 408. Votto was on base three times last night. Knocked in a run with a hit in the first inning. Walked twice, scored twice. He had a big hit in that first game against Walker Bueller to kind of get it going to set up that two run double by Jeanette. Like I made mention that Arizona had lost three in a row, make it now four in a row. Forgot the Diamondbacks played earlier today. They have played one run games each of the last three nights, all losses to the Washington Nationals. Two won the final today. I think there was Steven Strasburg in the Nationals today. One ball to two strikes, a count on Votto with two down and nobody on. Straight up in the air, and this will be a perfect opening inning for Stripling as Peterson easily gets to it. So Homer Bailey will try and match the start of Stripling when we return.
veteran Chase Hudley led off for the first time all year long last night. We'll do so again tonight. Peterson in left, Kemp in right. Bellinger really struggling in this series. Taylor the shortstop, Muncy at third. Hernandez Barnes stripling the latter third. Homer Bailey looking for win number one. Well, Homer really kind of needs to uh, exercise the demon of the home run ball. That's been his downfall here the last couple of times out. We said that in the open, nine home runs in the last four games. This is not a home run hitting ballpark. Good spot for Homer to face the team, just like it was Matt Harvey last night. A good pitcher's ballpark and inconsistent offense and a team that has really struggled against right-handers. Those are the overall numbers on Homer. And you mentioned the nine home runs in the last four starts. That's nine home runs in a little more than 19 innings. Pulled foul by Chase Hutton. And I really believe for Homer Bailey, it has nothing to do with velocity on his fastball. It has everything to do with command of the strike zone. When he comes inside, especially against a left-hander, come way in there. Don't miss out over the plate. Chase Huntley, born and raised Southern California, was born just up the road in Pasadena, but went to high school in Long Beach, then stayed here in town to go to UCLA. Was only in minor league baseball for about a year and a half and then brought to the big leagues with the Philadelphia Phillies in 2003. Was traded here to the Dodgers in 2015. <laughs> Shevler will come get it for the first out of the inning. Take a look at the Reds on defense presented by Ford. You mentioned Shevler getting the nod in center with Duvall and Winker on each side. Suarez, Peraza, Jeanette, and Votto third to first, and again, Tucker Barnhart behind the plate. Tony Cruz has only made one start since he replaced Devin Mesoraco. I would imagine we would see Tony Cruz tomorrow. Day game after a night game, although this is a very early evening start time here in Los Angeles at 10 minutes after 6 o'clock. Foul ball. Peterson, a 241 batter. He has one home run and 13 runs batted in. Bat, but this will fall in for a base hit. That one muscled into right center field off the bat of Chuck Peterson. And he's a big, strong young man. Now Peterson takes a big hack, and that ball up in the zone right there, in off the plate. Not all that bad of a pitch by Homer Bailey. Not always do you get a good result from a good pitch. One thing I have noticed about Homer Bailey the last few starts, Tom, as compared to earlier in the year, he has gone primarily with four-seam fastballs the last four or five starts out there. Early in the year, he was mixing in a lot of two-seamers. And I think that maybe he didn't want to, you know, reinvent himself as a sinker ball two-seam pitcher. Still trying to spot that fastball, but I think having one that moves down and one that stays on plane, not a bad combo. Sinking liner in the right field, and that's a base hit. So here come the Dodgers right from the get-go. Back-to-back one-out singles. And that'll bring Cody Bellinger to the plate, part of our Elk and Elk storyline. The reigning rookie of the year, and the Reds have really done a number on this guy through the first two games. And you brought it up at the time, attacking him with that high fastball. Well, if you remember, though, the first two pitchers in this series, Tyler Malley, he lives upstairs with a really live high fastball. Last night, 
Matt Harvey was throwing his fastball 95 miles an hour up at that top part of the zone. Can Homer get it up there and be there effectively is the question. Bellinger only has one hit in the series and that was that ball last night against Harvey that was a you know, harmless fly ball in the right field and Scott Shevler just lost the ball and it wound up dropping between Shevler and Billy Hamilton come to find out after the game last night Hamilton didn't see it either. No. It was quite an eventful night for Shevler between that fly ball and then the situation near the end of the game and most of you were already in bed last night. When the Reds went to make a double switch at the end of a half inning and Shevler just went back in the clubhouse assuming that he was the one coming out of the game when in reality his manager Jim Riggleman wanted him staying in the game and wanted Jesse Winker coming out of the game. Shevler had already gone back up into the clubhouse taken off his spikes taken off his jersey taken off his t-shirt and put on a new t-shirt and a sweatshirt to watch the rest of the game in the dugout. Well it didn't matter because once one pitch was thrown he was officially out of the game. Sure. Oh and two the count on Bellinger and they strike him out on a 92 mile per hour fastball again up in the strike zone so the beat goes on for the Reds on Cody Bellinger. Well there can't be a simpler scouting report out there than what is up that around Cody Bellinger right now. Once you get ahead you climb the ladder. And you can just see that big loop in his swing long arms long swing a little bit of a loop very tough to get to the to the letter high heater. Chris Taylor the batter off to a slow start at 230 does have five home runs is batted 14 in. First and second two out scoreless game just underway at Dodger Stadium. Taylor the pride of Virginia Beach Virginia born and raised there and continues to make his home there beautiful town. Pretty nice pickup the Dodgers made by acquiring Taylor. He was originally a Seattle Mariner, and they traded for him in June of 2016. And he proved to be a huge lift for this Dodger team last year. Hit 21 home runs, had 34 doubles, and of course in the National League Championship Series, he and Kike Hernandez. I mean, you talk about two guys you don't figure to be the big headline act. But they had as much to do with beating the Cubs as anybody. Taylor had two home runs in that series, had six hits and 19 at bats. A one out single, the runner at second. Kemp got him there with a single. But with two away, it's a 2 2 pitch. Bailey coming to Taylor. Ball three. on this 3-2 pitch and Bailey to the plate. They're loaded. 
Well, Bailey was so fine there against a right-handed batter, Taylor. Nibble, 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 and now he's got to deal with a left-handed batter in Muncy, who right. swung the bat pretty well in this series. You're right, he has swung the bat, and Taylor is the guy that you wanted to go to, especially when he showed you not a very good swing against decent breaking balls that Bailey threw up there. Once he got ahead with the breaking ball, he kind of nibbled away, and Taylor didn't bite, ends himself up with the base on balls. Muncy will come right out of the on-deck circle swinging the bat. Huh. What else are you looking for there with bases loaded, right? Muncy had two hits, two extra base hits. Knocked in a couple of runs last night, had a double and a solo home run. He was on base twice in the series opener. Of course, he's replacing the injured Justin Turner right now at third base. Otto to Bailey, and they get the out. Well done. Dodgers leave him loaded. Bailey going to the bag quickly, and Votto ranging far to his right. Has homered in four straight games. He had one day off, hit two home runs, then had a day off, and now has homered the first two games of this series in Los Angeles. Jeanette now with six home runs, 24 batted in, and that batting average has skyrocketed up to 319. Take a look at the list of Reds who have homered in five straight games. Vado homered in four straight games already this year, you may remember. Pretty impressive list right there. A couple of Hall of Famers and a number of Reds Hall of Famers on that list. Joey had the four-gamer come to an end in Minneapolis. Jeanette trying to keep it rolling in L.A. Chased one out of the zone, and Stripling has retired the first four batters of the game. It's interesting, the Reds' offense has been pretty solid here the first two games of this series. They get a six spot on ten hits last night. They score four on nine hits in the series opener. 
And after riding the broad shoulders of Eugenio Suarez in his 15 runs batted in on the just completed homestand, Suarez has been quiet to begin this trip. One of eight. Of course, he might have been worn out from running the bases <laughs> during that just completed nine game homestand. Says the crew chief, Angel Hernandez. Two and two on Suarez. Pulled foul. We brought up earlier this is only Stripling's third start with the injuries in the Dodgers starting rotation to their main man, of course. Future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw and a mighty fine left hander in Ryu. Stripling has pitched in 11 games out of the bullpen. His last two outings as a starter. That ball slicing towards Kemp in right center field, and that's out number two. Coming up later on, our whole true moment presented by Miller Light. We invite you to stick around for that. Stripling has gone four innings in each of his two starts on the 30th of April against Arizona. That was down in the desert. Eight hits, four runs. Had a Matt Harvey-like start from last night. His most recent start on the sixth down in San Diego. Four innings, four hits, no runs. In there, strike one. Well, you may remember Stripling from his major league debut. He was called up out of the minor leagues, had never pitched above double A, and got a start for the Dodgers and ended up pitching into the eighth inning, no hit baseball. And because he had had Tommy John surgery a couple of years previous, his manager and the same manager now that is running the Dodgers, Dave Roberts, took him out of the ball game. There's a lot of controversy as to. You know why would you take a guy out after just 100 pitches when he's throwing a no hitter? As it turned out, it backfired on the on the Dodgers. The next pitcher came in, and the very first batter that he faced had a two-run home run. The Dodgers ended up losing that ball game. But that was quite a debut for a guy that uh, had never pitched above Double A. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge story around baseball. Him coming out of that game. But you know he was impressive enough last year once he got here that he made the Dodgers postseason roster for all three series. Many of you know some may not. When you start a series you can declare a roster for the division series and then you can change it up for the next round and then do the same again should you reach the World Series. And he was around for all three of them and then when he got the ball. He had three scoreless innings. Of relief. One time Dodgers Scott Shevler 2 2 pitch and that's strike three which will retire the side in order for the second straight inning. No score Dodgers bat last of the second.
first com career complete game for Homer Bailey. It was at Pittsburgh. He only gave up four hits, six strikeouts, didn't walk a batter. He has six career complete games. Interesting enough, three of them have come versus the Pirates in Pittsburgh, including one of two no hitters as he goes back to work in the second. All right, Jim Day, thank you very much. Homer has already allowed a couple of hits, three base runners, but pitched out of a bases loaded jam in the opening inning. So now he'll turn his attention to Kike Hernandez, a number seven hole hitter and center fielder. Barnes to follow, then the pitcher Stripling. Hernandez had the game the kids dream about when they're growing up last year in game five of a National League Championship Series. He hit three home runs in one game. First Dodger to do that in the postseason game. And he has a base hit here to begin the inning. And you know it was so fascinating they did a, a beautiful feature up on the scoreboard before the game last night. Hernandez hails from Puerto Rico. And they had just had the, the terrible hurricane that had come through and many of you read about and many of you probably donated to you know all the power was out in Puerto Rico and they it were trying is. to find clean water. Yeah again for a second time. But. He was able to reach his mother and father and talk to them on the telephone. And he told them before that game five that he was going to hit a home run for them. He knew he was going to be in the lineup that night. And he ends up hitting three home runs. And another base hit. The hits just keep on coming here. That's already four of them in the game against Bailey, and we're two batters into the second inning. Now uh, the theme that I'm looking at right now is the Dodgers hitting that ball to right field. Every one of the base hits has been to right field. Jock Peterson, a left-handed one, he's the only one who has pulled the ball for a base hit. Everybody else has just gone the other way, kind of taking what Homer Bailey is giving them. When you get right-handers beginning to do that a little bit, time to come off the plate. Inside, that is. Stripling will be up there to bunt him over. We'll see how aggressive the Reds are in trying to defense this play. Votto already two thirds of the way in, and they try the old butcher boy, and Votto hits the deck immediately. I mean, straight on his back when that pitcher took that cut. Well, then maybe you don't need to charge that hard. I mean, you're not in a good fielding position if you're looking at the clouds. Boy, it's got to be scary, though, isn't it? Yeah. When I mean, you're that's that close, whole, man. That's the whole idea of a butcher boy play. I mean, if you want to charge that hard, there is a remedy for it. And the Dodgers have figured it out. Stripling looks like he can put the bat on the ball. See if they try it again. This time they have him. But, but he pulls the bat away and takes strike two. The Reds have what they call the wheel play on, which is where the shortstop will come over and cover the third base bag. And he'll beat the runner over there, and the third baseman comes charging hard. So they've got everybody coming in from the corners, and the pitcher coming right up to shoot in the middle. Foul ball, and Stripling's out of there on strikes. And boy, this pattern that we have seen so far this year in Major League Baseball. And Chris, you and I talked about it. Jeff Brantley and I talked about it at length during the Mets series. The art of bunting is in rapid decline. Well, I think in this particular case, you know, you, you put the pitcher in a hole right there by letting him do a little butcher boy. He fouls the ball off. Now he's got one strike on him. And if he doesn't get the next one down, it's you're really in, in a tough shape, tough spot, and that's where he found himself. Which he took the second one for a strike. Well, he thought it was down low, and yep. he ended up getting 0-2. And, and then at that point, you've got to go for a strikeout if you're Homer Bailey. Ground ball gets him out of the inning. 
Back to the top of the order, and Chase Utley fly to center, leading off the L.A. first inning. Ball one. Told you Utley batted leadoff for the first time this season last night. He went to UCLA, as we mentioned earlier, and it just happened to be UCLA night here at the ballpark last night. Popped up, short left field. Peraza out, Duvall in, and the left fielder makes a play. Now we bring up the UCLA thing as Jim Day was beside himself, and somebody asked Dave Roberts Peterson. if Huntley was batting leadoff because it was UCLA night last night. Well, if you have to have a reason, that's a good one. I thought it made perfect sense. But Jim was really bothered by it. He came up to the, uh, the booth before the game. He said, can you believe this? This is not true, Tom. I was Did simply making an observation. No, you, you were a little. Well, Dave Roberts handled the question like a champ. Well, he's an easy guy to like. Great smile. A lot of personality about him. So Bailey trying to pitch out of another tough jam. The Dodgers left him loaded in the first inning. They had two on, nobody out to begin this inning. Now two outs, and here's Peterson, who had a broken bat single into right center field in the first. Both runners will advance. I'm not sure if that was a cross up or just a ball that had a life of its own right there and just simply took off on Tucker Barnhart. Track able to haul it in. Five left on base for the Dodgers through the first two innings in a scoreless game.
Great American Ballpark. You can be there as low as $10. We have a fireworks Friday. Don't forget the Super Saturday day night doubleheader. And a family Sunday. For tickets, visit Reds.com. Boy, the Cubs are getting it rolling. They have worn out their crosstown rivals, the Chicago White Sox, over the last two days. So just about everybody else they've played this year. The White Sox, that is. You know, you look up and down the National League Central Division. I don't know if I've ever seen this. Where, you know, you have the wins, the losses, the percentage, the games back, the last 10 games. And the next column is streak. You know, what kind of streak is each team on? And I don't know if I've ever seen, obviously it's happened before, but I don't remember looking down at the column and seeing every team in a division in the Central that's won two or more in a row. Cardinals two, Milwaukee two, Pirates four, Cubs now five, Cincinnati four. Well, you know what the common theme there would be is if all you have to do is look down one more that's row or right. two and you see the National League West because right now the National League Central is playing the National League West and they're all on losing streaks. Every team in that division has lost two or more consecutively. I think the only team in the Obviously, the, the only team that is not playing a Central Division team that's in the West would be the Diamondbacks. You have the Pirates playing the Giants, Cardinals playing the Padres, the Brewers playing Colorado, and the Reds here in L.A. Tucker Barnhart on the appeal went around, and that's three strikeouts. So far in the game for Stripling. Yeah, Stripling looks pretty good tonight, and I, I think the reason why, to me, he looks so good, other than the, the obvious strikeouts and so on, he's got two breaking pitches that he's throwing over the plate, and he's got a changeup that's moving away from left-handers. And anytime you have two off-speed pitches, one going one way and the other going the other way, you've got something to build on. I mean, he's not a pitcher that will throw an overabundance of fastballs. In fact, he'll, he'll throw a couple of show me fastballs early in the count and then basically go with the breaking pitch from there. Well, that is a yellow hammer. You know, the only way you get a, a, a curveball to break straight over the top is to throw the ball straight over the top. That's a good old fashioned 12 to 6 right there. And then Duvall just shoots a breaking ball the other way, and he's the first base runner tonight. Duvall had thoughts of trying for second base there and slams on the brakes with a one out single. One of the examples that I use around younger players, especially. You know, high school age pitchers that if you've just thrown yourself what you think is an excellent pitch, especially a breaking ball, the chances of you throwing a better one are very slim. So why not go to something else and then come back to that breaking ball again? And Duval went to school and he saw a better one the first time, a little more hittable one his time that he hit the ball to right field. Bailey able to pull the bat away on the appeal ball one. Bailey with two sacrifices so far this year. One hit in 12 at bats overall.
outs in the inning. Uh, neither pitcher able to do at the plate what they've been asked to do. Well, every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics, undisputed with Skip and Shannon. Weekdays, 9.30 a.m. to noon Eastern, only on FS1. Back to the top of the order after Bailey fails to advance a runner with a bunt. Here's Winker who tapped out to the right side. It was a third baseman who is standing next to the second base bag then, and he is now in Monday. They leave the shortstop Taylor as the lone ranger there on the left side. Now, Duvall will surprise you every now and again. He's a perfect two for two in stolen base attempts. Duvall's a much better athlete than I think a lot of people assume. And another jam shot roller at the third baseman. And the inning is over. We play two and a half, and we're scoreless at Dodger Stadium. Go further. Well, what a job they have done in downtown Los Angeles. You to come here about 10, 12 years ago. There's no way you were walking around at night down there. And after they built the Staples Center and everything that's gone on around it now, it's a whole different world over there. Thinking about moving out here? No. There are very few things I know for sure in the world. <laughs> that would be one of them. And I like coming out here. Oh, I, I had a lot of friends out here through the years used to live here that have left here. And really, that's a theme, unfortunately, for the entire state of California. The last decade was the first one ever since California was founded where more people left and more people moved in. And the same thing's going to happen during this decade. Well, it's a beautiful state. I mean, you've got it all here. The mountains, the skiing, the beaches, the, the desert. You know, huh, that's why they're leaving. 
2 and 0 the count on Bellinger. Bellinger struck out swinging his first time up. Bailey paints a fastball knee high on the outside corner. It's been the high fastball as we've documented through the first two games and first at bat of this series that's done in Bellinger. See if they go upstairs. Looks like they are setting up Barnhart. And he got it too far low. And will pay the price for it. Soon as you saw that ball down around the knees. And the swing of Bellinger. That's not where Barnhart wanted the baseball. I don't think it's where Homer Bailey wanted the baseball either. And I'm sure they went over it in the scouting report all week long here in preparation for the Dodgers. He struck out in the first inning on a fastball on a 2 2 count. Here it is. Just a little bit above the belt. Good spot right at the top of the zone. This one, that looked actually like a slider right there. He maybe was trying to drop it on his back foot. Nope, oh, excuse me, that was a fastball. I was going to say, the only thing, Bailey, a great effort there, but because he made contact with the ball. In fair territory, that is a fair ball, and that's a bunt single by Taylor. Well, that's a good effort by Bailey. Got off the mound very quickly, just unable to get it. He has pitched one after another after another now kind of high stress innings. These are the kind of games that just wear you out mentally. You just can't. You know back up for a second if you're home or bad you got to just keep grinding along. And he lost his footing when he delivered that pitch. So here in the last three pitches he's thrown. You've had home run. You've had bunt single where he tries to dive and make the catch. And then he almost falls down. Taylor has two stolen bases. He's been thrown out three times. Two balls and a strike. Max Muncy ended the first inning on that bouncing ball to the right side where Votto went ranging far to his right. Had Jeanette standing right behind him to make the routine. Votto had to dive and from his knees throw to a covering Bailey just in time to get out of the inning. Two and two on Muncie. And Bailey strikes him out on a 94 mile per hour fastball away from him. That's a third strike out of the game for Homer. Number 14, Kike Hernandez, a single into right field an inning ago, wound up being stranded at third base, and they're paying a lot of attention to Taylor over there. 
A home run here in the Dodger third solo blast by Cody Bellinger his fifth of the year. And the Dodgers out to the one nothing lead. I mean Taylor had not even taken his lead barely yet. When barely throws over there. And it's not much of a lead once he takes one. Extending that thing out a little more now. Strike one to Hernandez. Hernandez has always been a part time player. He's never had a season where he's had more than 350 plate appearances. And that's really not likely to change unless the Dodgers just continue to have woeful luck with injuries. Plays a little bit here and there, can play shortstop, plays around the infield, plays center field. We saw him play left field and center field in the same inning last night. Well, he has seen playing time at every position this season already, except for pitcher and catcher. Shebler able to find it, and that will end the inning. But the home run by Bellinger gives the Dodgers at the end of three a one nothing lead over Bailey in the red. Lowe's whole team together. Career versus the Dodgers, mighty good. Jeanette Peraza Vado trying to keep those numbers together tonight. That's the trio, not in that order, but the trio that will bat against Stripling here in the fourth inning. Bellinger a home run and they just completed third in a one nothing Dodger lead. Reds have won four games in a row for the first time all year long. They've been averaging just short of five runs per game. And boy you talk about pitching my oh my. During this four game winning streak the starters ERA is one point three. Starters have allowed a total of three earned runs. In twenty one innings. The bullpen, even better than that. They finally gave up their first two runs last night. But the bullpen ERA is barely over one. That's well, a pretty good recipe for a winning streak. And nearly as many innings pitched by the bullpen than as the starters, because you've got four starts and you've only got 20 innings, 21 yep. innings total out of your starters. That means your bullpen's carrying a big load. Of course Harvey only allowed to go if you will for four last night. And Malley had to really battle showing. A lot of heart here in the opening game of this series when the Dodgers left eight runners on base in the first three innings. And Malley managed to get through five and gave up one run. 
But the two starts before that, you know, to begin this whole turn was Romano's six innings. There's strike three to Peraza, and Castillo was lifted one out shy of six innings. Chris Ripley's got that breaking ball working tonight. A lot of pitchers will go to go to the harder breaking ball with two strikes. The slower breaking ball earlier in the count to kind of set that up. The reason being that if you're protecting the plate, you've got a better chance of hitting something slow coming in there. But of course, nowadays fewer and fewer hitters protect the plate. They don't take it, you know, take two to go to right field. Uh uh. Take two and still try to hit it into the upper yep. deck. That's why that slow curveball can be effective. And that's why you saw in Major League Baseball the first month of the season the highest percentage ever in the history of the game of number of plate appearances and it was right around 35 percent well over one third of the plate appearances through the first month in baseball this year ended in either a a home run B a strikeout or C a walk. So he popped up to the left fielder Peterson ending the first inning. Off the glove of Bellinger. And that's the second time we've seen in this game from each now first baseman where they have three infielders on the right side of the infield. And yet the first baseman goes after a ball with a guy standing right behind him. Where it would have been a routine play. You know, I tell you, Tom, and this was the area that we're talking about right here. He's going to go here to try to get that ground ball. And look where the second baseman Utley's standing. I mean, it's an easy play for Utley. Everything's right in front of him. And I think it's the one area where, you know, the shift hasn't been figured out from drawing board to execution on the field. I mean, it looks good when you're drawing it up and saying, hey, this guy hits the ball on the ground, he's going to pull the ball. But actually telling your first baseman to lay off anything that goes to your right is trying to undo years of training sure. for him. And it takes a little while to figure that out. Well, they score that a base hit. They should. And Scooter Jeanette the batter. Vado without a stolen base attempt this year. Jeanette lost one into right. That'll be a base hit. Reds had one hit through the front three innings, and now they have consecutive singles from Votto and Jeanette with Suarez coming up. Well, they're finally getting some of the same type of hits that the Dodgers have dropped on the Reds. A little jam shot right there by Jeanette. Right now, he's just waving a magic wand. I mean, if he puts the ball in play, the ball's finding a spot somewhere for a base hit. More often than not, though, for Jeanette, that ball where it finds a spot is over the fence. So the first jam of the night faced by Ross Stripling. Two on, one out. Suarez flied out to the right fielder Kemp in the second inning. And hit it hard. When you put guys on base in this young season, and this guy has been money in the bank. Let's see here. Strike one. Suarez thought that ball was off the plate inside. Fox tracks showing perhaps just catching the inside corner. 
Nothing in two on Suarez. Two on, one out. Popped up. And look out out there. I don't want Hernandez to be running into Kemp. That may not end well. Well, it probably wouldn't end well for Hernandez. That's what I mean. <laughs> But, you know, he did that actually over in left field as well. I mean, he's trying to cover as much ground as he possibly can. Hernandez is. Now he's going to check the, the little scouting cheat sheet that he has in his back pocket as to where to play certain Reds hitters. See, a lot of players now do that like football quarterbacks do, mm -hmm. wearing that kind of thing on a wristband rather than having to reach in your pocket every single time you want to pull out the scouting report. And that's hooked foul off the bat of Shepard. Or rather than just simply look into the dugout and look for the, the the coach with the towel waving you one way or another. It's a lot more efficient to just send them to the spot. In fact, I think it was the Pittsburgh Pirates a few years ago that wanted to put dots on the field for their for their fielders. You just hammer like little tiny little markers out there that you really couldn't see unless you were standing on top of the grass. That became illegal. Big chance here for Shevler. He looked at strike three his first time up. Boy, they are paying a lot of attention to a guy who never steals. Threw over a couple of times when Votto was at first and now trying to catch him out there at second base. Low roller, going to be a tough play. And picking it out of the dirt is Bellinger on the short throw from Utley. Boy, what a nice play that was by the Dodger first baseman, Red Strand, too. Shall we say busting a move out in the outfield? A little dance action. I had to ask him about it. Um, I don't know. It's just having fun. Uh, you know, they, they have a really nice speaker system out there in center field. I don't know if you've seen the structure, the speaker structure. But I, uh, I mean, it's it's just having a good time. Uh, and that's about it. But I'm going to leave it at, it at a no comment for the most part. He didn't want to comment on his prowess as a dancer, but yes, we've seen that structure in center field, one of Tom Burnham's favorites. They're always playing his kind of music here. I tell you one thing, I mean, it sounds great, but it really is in your face in this ballpark, and they really have it going nonstop. Lon Rosen is the guy who, for years and years and years, was Magic Johnson's agent. There's a base hit in the right field. By Austin Barnes. Well, that's a whopping seven hits already for the Dodgers through three innings and one bat. Carbon 
copy of the base hit that he had in the second inning. But Lon Rosen, you know, got out of the agent business, and when Magic Johnson got in the baseball business, and he's a minority owner of this team now, you know, they brought a lot of the sort of NBA uh, entertainment, for lack of a better word, where it is literally non-stop. There's a bunt this time by Strickland. And he will advance a runner after failing to do so the last time. So there's barely a second that goes by in this ballpark where there's not something being blasted out of that speaker. And boy, it's loud and clear. Great sound system. The only other ballpark that has it that way where it's coming right into your face is City Field in New York. Same thing. But the music choice between L.A. and New York is the difference between the two. Well, I think you can hear this sound system in New York. <laughs> you might be right. Except they drown it out there with Springsteen and the Stones. <laughs> All right, runner at second. one nothing Dodgers in front. Already the third at bat in this game for Chase Utley. At least fly to center, popped up to left. And Peraza thinking about the double play, but that ball hits so weakly, a broken bat, shattered bat. And up the for three. The fielder, John Peterson. Good pitch by Bailey, right off the end of the bat by Utley. Doc Peterson had a broken bat single into right center field in the first inning, and he stranded two with a fly ball to Shebler, ending the second inning. A runner out there at second base with two away. And Bailey the 1-1 one, one to Jock Peterson. Two and two, the count on Peterson. Bailey, a check of the runner at second base. And a fastball sails high and away ball three. Matt Kemp, you up next, right handed batting. So 
Well, here you have Peterson one for two. You have Kemp one for two. But Kemp is having a far better year than Peterson. Hooked into right field, a base hit. They're going to wave around the runner. Here comes Linker straight to the plate. It'll be cut off. And a two out one scoring single by Peterson gives the Dodgers a two nothing lead. Awfully tough to throw a runner out at home on a single with two outs because the runner gets such a big jump out there. He's off of the crack of the bat. Peterson goes down to get a, a pretty decent pitch by Bailey there. But he lines it into right field. And you see how quickly the throw has gotten off by there by by Winker. Looked online, but I think it was so low that he just wouldn't have gotten to the plate without bouncing two or three more times. In the bottom of the fourth inning, and the Dodgers have eight base hits against Homer Bailey here tonight. Only two runs. So he's making some pitches when he's needed to make them through the early part of this game. Line drive single to right field in the first inning and grounded out to the shortstop leading off the third. Bailey off the rubber, staring into the stands, and now will put the right foot right back on it. Straight up in the air. And that'll do it. Dodgers have scored in back-to-back -back innings and lead at the end of four, two nothing. served. We stand ready to serve all military families.
Reds fans, don't miss Marvel Superhero Night of the Ballpark. Buy the Marvel Superhero ticket package. Take home an exclusive Captain America bobblehead. And that bobblehead is only available with purchase of this ticket theme package. Log on to Reds.com slash themes. Reds are down 1-0. They bat here in the top of the fifth against Raw. 2-0, I beg your pardon, after Dodgers score in the bottom of the fourth inning. And a swing and a foul ball back out of play. Ladder third in the batting order. Barnhart, Duvall, Bailey. Stripling retired the first seven batters of the game. He allowed a single to Adam Duvall with one out in the third, but then retired the next two. No big deal. The only jam he's been in all night long is he has taken care of Barnhart for the second time. It was consecutive singles by Vado and Jeanette in the fourth. But he got Suarez on a routine pop-up. Shebler on an infield roller. And we're one out into the fifth. You be the judge. Well, he go around? Uh, I mean, what the hitter, what the umpires that is looked for is the bat head, and did it clear the body? The rule book says, did he swing at it or not? You have to make a judgment. Did he make an effort to contact the ball? But umpires have to have some key to go by, and it's the bat head clearing the body. Perfect two for two for Adam Duvall batting down in that number eight spot here tonight. Pitcher Homer Bailey. So he has a single in the right center and now hooks a single in the left. Yeah, both the hits tonight for Adam Duvall have come off that breaking ball. First one was a curveball going to right field. This one a little bit more speed on it, a slider that he gets out in front of. Bailey's normally a pretty good bunter. He's a guy that, that demonstrates good form. He doesn't seem to be afraid of the baseball, but he just looks a little out of sorts out there tonight. there by Homer pulls the bat away one ball one strike well the whole idea if I think Tom about teaching bunners whether you're a position player or a pitcher not to swivel completely around is that you have a much better feel of the strike zone when you're in a batting stance so you kind of pivot a little bit but you you still maintain as much of a batting stance as possible so you know what the strike zone looks like he's too far away from the plate for me because by the time you shorten up if you're that far away from the play where Bailey is and you shorten up by the time you have to reach to get that outside pitch you're lunging at it. Get right up on top of the dish. It's free. Homer does a nice job places it down right in front of the plate and he will advance the runner this time after failing to do so in a third inning so Bailey is third sacrifice. And the Reds for a second straight inning and a runner in scoring position. Now Stripling is really chewed up Winker twice tonight. One pitch is way in on his thumbs and he's hit very slow weak rollers to the right side of the infield. We'll see about this time. Came inside on him again, this time off speed, strike one. And this time Winker will deliver. 
Shoots one into left center field, and Duvall will score easily. And the Reds are on the board for the first time tonight. They've cut the lead to two to one. Winker with his 11th run batted in this year. Is it me, or does it seem like every hit in this ballpark, of course, except for the home run we've seen, is just something off the end of the bat, or maybe a little jam shot, kind of falling right in between the infield and the outfield? Semi line drive right there and gets the job done. Those two out base hits at the score run. That's a sweet ribby. Here's Peraza, who's 0 for 2, is granted a short and struck out looking. This should in the inning, although oh, just in time, hustling all the way there was Winker. But the Reds get a run, 2-1, midway through it. Dealing against the Cardinals. He took a no hitter into the ninth inning. In fact, two strikes, two outs, and George Hendrick hit a home run off of him. There goes the no hitter, and it tied the game at one. So Soto couldn't believe it, but the Reds would win the game in the bottom of the ninth. But oh, so close for Mario Soto. Yes, two indeed. strikes, two outs, and a home run. What a fabulous pitcher he was. It was such a shame that he pitched on so many bad Reds teams. Because Lord knows how many games he would have won. This time they take care of Bellinger, who homered his last time up on a slow, weak roller to Votto. And that's the way we begin the bottom of the fifth. Dodgers leading two to one. So look, when all is said and done, Bailey is allowed two hits in the first, two in the second, two in the third, two in the fourth. But only two runs. And it's a one run game here in the last of the fifth inning. And he's kept his pitch count under control enough to be able to go a few more innings mm -hmm. yet. Well, he could use an easy one, though. You talked earlier about every inning has been a stressful inning for Bailey. They had two on with one out in the first. They had the bases loaded when it came to an end. They had two on, nobody out in the second. They had a home run with one out, then a bunt. Runner went to second, had to pitch out of that. Two hits and a run in the fourth. But Bailey's been around the blocker time or two. He 
He's fallen behind Taylor, who had a bunt single this last time up after drawing a walk in the first inning. Bailey is 11th career start against the Dodgers. Reds have won six of those games. Bailey has won four while losing four. Scalded down the left field line. Nothing soft about that. Taylor is on for the third straight time tonight. Now, Taylor's coming along. Maybe that's the, the move that Dave Roberts made with him to get him out of the leadoff spot. Take a little pressure off of Chris Taylor, and he has responded here tonight. Third time on the bag, and this time a rip job down the left field line. Check swing by Muncie and no, ball one. Everybody ready now for the 1 1 delivery on Max Muncie. And it's too low, a fastball, two balls and a strike. Muncie a ground out to Votto, leaving the bases loaded in the opening inning, and then Bailey struck him out in the third. That's a fair ball down the right field line, and the Dodgers will get that run right back. Once he had a double and a home run here last night, an RBI double his third time up tonight. 3-1 Dodgers. Seems like the Dodgers were going opposite field the first couple of times through the order. This time in this inning anyway. Two pull jobs right down the line. This one by Muncie, the lefty hitter, and it'll score the run easily from second base. Dodgers now have three runs and ten base hits, and there's only one out in the fifth. Here's Kike Hernandez, one of two. Took a big, huge cut there. Yeah, and probably chased the pitch out of the zone. You know, one of the reasons why Bailey is maybe giving up a lot of hits, he's he's just not getting his first pitch in the at bat in there for a strike. He's only doing that about 50% of the time tonight. So anytime you miss with that first pitch, you put the hitter on the offensive. Numbers after the first pitch is a strike or first pitch is a ball. The, the top number here, that 159 average is after a strike. 358 after you lead them off with a pitch out of the zone. It's a big difference between a stressful inning and an easy inning. Well, the, the, the two K 
counts that you really look at in baseball since they've really started paying attention to this kind of thing the first pitch and you just saw an example of that is it a strike is it a ball so what happens on the next pitch the other would be the fourth pitch of the at bat you know being one and two instead of two and one there is a significant spread between those two naturally off the end of the bat Duvall's got it for the second out of the inning. Right now, how about a quick message from Miami Valley Gaming? Get ready to get lucky. They've given an intentional walk to Austin Barnes. You know, Tom, the other count that I would pay attention to is the old 3 2 count because something happens on a 3 2 count that is either going to benefit the team in the field greatly or benefit the field at the bat. You know what though I, I was surprised and you and I were talking about this one night a couple of years ago and we really started looking into it. I was surprised at how low the batting average has been on a 3 2 count for a long long time. Yeah I, well when you start to consider what the on-base percentage is, though, that's when that offsets the low batting average. Because you know, if you're not swinging at a pitch outside the zone in another count, you're not going. You know, you're not going to first base. Right. Three-two count. You know, that's your money count there. But that's the count that you really want to avoid if you're a pitcher. Because I just think more bad things happen sure. on that count. Runners in motion. You're going to walk a guy if you miss the zone. Plus, you've already piled up a bunch of pitches by the time you get there. All right, so the bases with runners at first and second. And here's a pitcher who's having a good night tonight, Stripling. And on the mound, he's only allowed five hits and a run at the plate. His bunt led to a Dodger run in the fourth. You know, Chris, this year so far in baseball, the batting average on a 3 2 count to back up the point you were making is only 205 batting average. But the on base percentage is over 450. I'll tell you what, though, That's if I'm on the mound, I'll take my chances with that. If I'm a guy that is capable of throwing strikes, I'll roll the dice on that. How do you mean? Uh, what I'm saying is that 205 is the lowest batting average of any count that there is except for 0 and 1 in baseball. So if I'm a pitcher and I'm just playing the odds, I'm going to take a batter hitting 205. It's higher in every other count except for 0 and 1. Now I know the on base percentage is high, but I'm saying if I'm a guy that has good command, generally speaking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not yeah. some guys all I, I know over what the strike zone. As far as doing damage on the count. Sure, sure. If, you, if you're a hitter and you're job is not to make an out right and that's the approach that Joey Votto takes sure you know he'll take the 450 bat, uh, on base percentage anytime swing and a miss and that takes care of Stripling another run for the Dodgers a couple of more hits they lead by two
Jim Riggleman. You better believe he was awestruck. I tell you what, that was quite an honor. Uh, I, I really, uh, you know, I signed as a Dodger and um, would see him in, uh, in Vero Beach back in the days, you know, spring training and so forth. And uh, just really the tremendous respect for him and his the, those teammates of his back in the day, Drysdale and all those guys. But, uh, uh, you know, Vero Beach was a special place. He, those guys were around all the time, and it was really neat to, to see him today. He looks like he could still pitch. Just standing there, there are certain people in the game of baseball just take your takes your breath away. And Sandy Koufax can command a room. It was incredible to see him walk in. Hey, you know, Jim, the thing I find most interesting in, in the words you're just talking about is the fact that in a day and age where everybody is trying to stand out from the crowd more times than not by the amount of noise they can make, whether it's screaming and yelling at somebody, or social media, or whatever it might be. I would make the argument the reason people are so fascinated and awestruck by Sandy Koufax is because he has been anything but those things. Well, that and then his greatness was uh, incredible and short lived. Yes. You know, he debuted when he was 19 years old, but he really didn't get on track until he was about 25. That was the first year he became an all star. An all star six years in a row, and at age 30, he had pitched his last game in the major leagues. A year in which he won the Cy Young Award, came in second in the MVP, won 27 games, and retired. And I, I was kind of posing a question as all the media guys were standing in the hallway waiting for Sandy Kopax to, to leave the office with Jim Riggleman. And I said, I wonder if you took a poll of the players in the Reds clubhouse and just said, Hey, what does the name Sandy Koufax mean to you? Do you have you ever heard of this guy? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have no, I have no idea. I'm just imagining there would be a handful that say, "Sure, Dodger, great." And I think the guy at the plate has a great respect for the history of the game and those that came before him. But I think you know he pitched in a completely different era. I mean, he retired in 1966. Sandy now 82 years old. Boy, he looks great. Sure too. does. I think he's always maintained his home in Vero Beach, Florida. You know, I did an interview with him a long time ago. I was writing a, a newsletter about pitching, and I was trying to interview as many different pitchers and pitching coaches as I could. And I had heard that he was a guest instructor for the Texas Rangers in spring training. It's a pretty good pitch. So I drove down to where they were having their spring training in, in Port Charlotte, and. Unannounced, and, and I tried to, to set up a, an interview with him, and he just didn't want to do it. And I was, I just pestered him and pestered him. And he finally relented, and he said, "Okay, but I'm not going to give you any mechanical advice on how to teach kids because I think pitchers should fall into their own category. They should be able to do whatever they want to do and whatever makes them feel good. What I did, the way I did it, may not be good for someone else." But he gave a great interview as it turned out and uh, I was forever happy and grateful that he would because I grew up with a huge Sandy Koufax fan. I mean it was Sandy Koufax and Steve Carlton for me. But the National League and ERA five straight seasons from 62 to 66 a strikeout leader four times. There's a base hit by Jeanette. Another multi hit game for Scooter. He led the league in wins three separate occasions 27 26 and 25 he threw a National League record four no hitters a perfect game of course in 65 and imagine if you will in a day and age where you might see the league leader strike out 200 batters in a season in this day and age he set a National League single season mark fanning 382 batters in the 1965 season almost 400 batters in one year good game tonight for Stripling he leaves with one out here in the six and he'll get a round of applause from the Hall of Famer so be our skyline chili call to the bullpen
here in the sixth inning. JT Chargois. He is uh, a young man that was originally drafted by the Minnesota Twins in the second round. Came out of Rice University, grew up down in Cajun country, as you may imagine, with a name like Chargois. Attended Sulphur High School in Sulphur, Louisiana. First time we get a look at him, he was in the big leagues with the Twins in a couple of years ago. This year he is now pitching in game number 17 for the Dodgers. And he's looking around for the baseball, not going to be able to find it. So on the very first pitch, Suarez is able to get a base hit. Boy, if he lets this ball go, I think it's a double play ball easily. Anything back to the pitcher like that is going to be ruled a base hit. It just goes off his glove. It takes one hop and gets on him very quickly. But you can see where Utley is standing right behind the second base back thinking this is going to be an easy one. And he never got a chance. I think that's a quick hook for Stripling. Mm, I'm with you all the I'll way. I'll tell you. But you know what, Chris, you and I seemingly say that about every night. I mean, maybe even more tonight, Tom, because we watched some of the highlights of the 1988 World sure. Series. And, of course, the hero of that World Series, the Dodgers were in that was Oral Hershiser. Who pitched two complete games, I think, in that World Series? In four he? days. In four days. And now the analytics will tell you, you know, the third time through the lineup is when you got to get your starting pitchers out of there. Now, in the defense of, of Dave Robbins, you know, Stripling has spent most of the time in the bullpen. Yes. And he hasn't worked himself up into, you know, being conditioned to pitch, you know, 100. Five or 110 pitches in a game. So, well, he's gone four outs beyond each of his first two starts here tonight. I yeah. mentioned earlier his first two starts, each of them lasting all the four innings, and he goes five and a third here in his third start. That's some easy innings too. Well, I mean, he's had no stress. Yeah, I mean, they got the two out little flare by Winker to knock in a run. The, the flare by Jeanette is the base hit that chased him. That's right. I mean, we've got a whole generation of pitchers who will never understand what it means to be five and dive. That was the joke that. Danny Darwin was talking to a couple of his starting pitchers down there. One of them said, I, I want to watch the old timers game going on today. And he said, well, they'll probably let you play in it. You're a five and dive guy. <laughs> they were only going to play five innings. Right. I don't know. It just gets to a point, it seems like, you know, we, we, we sit up here and like I said, it, you know, it, it, if there's one thing about the game of baseball that just continues to just, just Dumbfound me beyond description. It's the amount of people that complain about the way a situation is, and nobody does anything to change it. And that's talking about the way they handle pitchers in the minor leagues and then expect them to come up here and throw a complete game. It's just never going to happen again. Well, that's good or bad. That's up to you at home to decide. But gosh, it gets tired of hearing it. I mean, Hershiser threw a complete game in game two. He comes back in game five. They had an off day after game two. Then they had three, four, five. He was working on three days rest and goes back to back complete games. And of course, that on the heels of what turned out to be a Cy Young Award season where he broke Don Drysdale's all time consecutive scoreless inning streak and then was just beyond belief. 
in really the stunning upset of the age. You and I were talking about earlier. I still believe to this day that 1990 Reds team, even though most people didn't give them a chance, I think they were a better team than the A's of 1990. There is no way you could reasonably make an argument that that Dodger team on paper was better than that A's team, and that series ended in five games. Of course, the Reds would sweep the A's two years later. Shevler lifts a fly ball in the deep left field. Going. going back to the wall, and it's out of here. Shevler, an opposite field, three-run home run. And the Reds lead by a count of four to three. That ball just continued to carry, and we know how strong Shevler is. My, oh, my. You don't think they're wondering about that pitching change now, do you? Well, he, I'm sure Dave Roberts is. I mean, this is why managers don't sleep well at night, is because you wonder, what if I had not made the change? Or if you're a Dodger infielder, you're thinking, what if Chargois had just let that ball go up the middle and it would have been a double play and he'd be sitting in the dugout right now? Instead of watching Shebler and company come around the bases and make it a four to three Reds lead. And of course that's even salt in the wound because Shebler was a Dodger. Made his major league debut with the Dodgers. Hey, that's not an easy thing to hit a ball opposite field out of here. What a stunning turn of events. Make the pitching change. You get an infield hit on what could have been a double play ball. Now a home run. And here's a double by Barnhart. Chargois has entered the game, given up single, homer, now double. Crowd not happy. Really good swing by Tucker right here. He's figuring that Chargois is going to go away. He's got a nice run on his fastball, gets a lot of balls down on the ground, but he got that one up a little bit. It ran all right, but stayed flat for Tucker Barnhart. And you got to take it the other way. Every batter that he has faced has gotten a base hit off of him. The catcher coming out for a visit and looks like Chase Utley might be giving it to Shark a little bit here. David Hernandez now throwing in the Reds bullpen. You've got the pitcher spot Bailey due up next. I think everybody would be stunned if Bailey comes back for the sixth inning. He's already given up. A whopping 10 base hits through the first five innings of this game. And they've got David Hernandez hot and ready to go. There's Alex Brandino down in the hole there, kind of getting loose, probably is going to be the pinch hitter. Good night for Adam. Two for two, a single in the right center and a single in the left. He would score on the two out single by Winker an inning ago. I think first time this year he's been down the number eight spot. Yeah. He probably would not say, well, I like it down here, but it has worked tonight. Well, he likes two hits. Maybe he's not done. So even with the two singles tonight, there's Blandino, as you mentioned, with the helmet on, bat in hand. But even with the two hits tonight, Duvall at batting average still in the low 180s. And the 2 1 offering. Breaking ball swung on a miss. Good pitch there. Gone swinging, and now Bailey drops his head in disappointment as Jim Riggleman makes it official and 
brings him back to the dugout. I don't think Bailey's happy. He just slammed his helmet into the. Uh, he is really hot down there. In fact, we saw that from Bailey another time or two since Jim Riggleman has taken over as manager. Well, I mean, if you're the manager, you're thinking, how many times is this guy going to be able to walk the tightrope without the, the inning imploding on you? He's probably upset, maybe being taken out of the game. Maybe he's upset with himself a little bit for not working through this Dodger order a little bit easier. The other thing that really mystifies me about that move that Dave Roberts made by taking Striplin out is that he allows Striplin to bat with two out and two on in the last inning. Sure. And then after two batters, one a strikeout and then a, a, a flare base hit, he takes him out of the game. Well, if you're thinking about taking him out of the game, that's a fair ball, ball from Blandino into the corner. And Blandino coming into second base hard digging slides in there headlong with a pinch and run scoring double. And the Reds a four run sixth inning and now a two run lead. How about that? Well, Alex Blandino gets a pitch right in on the belt buckle. And he rips it right down the third baseline. Boy, I wish I had hair like that, don't you? You know, there's only two guys in this ballpark with hair like that. And the other played in that old timers game today. Your, your buddy on, on uh, many of the Fox That's baseball right. telecasts, Eric Harris. That's right. You're exactly right. I mean, hair's to die for. I'm telling you. <laughs> He's a right-handed pitcher. Pat Venditti is his name. He's pitched previously in the major leagues with the Oakland A's. And one of the few people who is good enough ambidextrous to be able to throw either left-handed or right-handed. Now the baseball rules will say, hey, well, how do you decide? Can you switch in the middle of an at-bat? And the answer to that is no. He has to visually show which way he's going to pitch to every batter that comes to the plate. 32 years old was throwing the ball very well for their triple A team in Oklahoma City. And back when they imposed this rule they put it in as rule 507 it says the pitcher must indicate visually to the umpire which hand he's going to use the batter is not uh, then he's not permitted to, to, to change hands or change arms until that at that ends. 
Now the odd thing about that rule is if then Diddy an ambidextrous pitcher is facing a switch hitter the hitter can switch in the middle of the at bat as long as the pitcher is not in his motion but the pitcher cannot switch Doesn't until the at bat is it? over no it doesn't. Pitch down low. What an unbelievable inning this has been. Votto struck out to start the inning. And then a little looping single into left field off the bat of Scooter Jeanette. And at that point, Dave Roberts decides to go to the bullpen. His pitcher had allowed just six hits and five and a third, had not walked a batter all night long while fanning seven. But he takes him out of the game. Suarez had an infield hit off the pitcher's glove. Then Shebler, the three run home run to left field. Barnhart had a double, one out later, a run scoring pinch hit double by Blandino. And now Venditti with a count of three and two on Jesse Winker. Down to third, bobbled, but time by Muncie and that will end the inning. A four run Cincinnati six. Shevler number four, the former Dodger, giving the Reds a lead here in the sixth inning. This coming Friday night, Reds take on the Cubs, and you can be there for $10. Stick around after the game. We have the post game fireworks show presented by Nathan's Famous. For tickets, visit Reds.com. Reds had five hits and one run through five innings. They had five hits and four runs in the top of this sixth inning. So now getting the ball, replacing Homer Bailey. He is a veteran right handed David Hernandez. Well, this it was his time a year ago. He was pitching down in Anaheim. Well this is exactly the kind of situation that the Reds signed Hernandez for. They wanted to bolster their bullpen bring in a couple of veteran pitchers who will pitch in games in which the Reds are winning. And that's exactly where they find themselves after a, a big inning last time. So you put four on the board you put one on the board before that and now you have Hernandez come in to pick up for Bailey who you know, he gutted his way through. 
Bailey allowed two hits in every inning tonight. Dodgers had single runs in the third, the fourth, and the fifth. That soft liner caught by Jeanette to start the inning. Off the bat of Chase Utley. Second back-to-back -back soft liner by Utley. Hard to do. Peterson two for three, two singles with a run batted in. You know, we mentioned during this winning streak, the Reds are averaging just short of five runs per game. But over the longer haul, you go back to the 23rd of April, and you're talking about 18 games, three work, three weeks worth of baseball. And this team offensively has been arguably the best offensive team in the National League. And I say arguably, I'm not even sure you could argue it. They score the most runs, they have the second most hits, they have the most doubles. They have the third best batting average, a second base on base percentage, a fourth best slugging percentage, and second best OPS of all teams in the league. So, I mean, I'm not sure if there's anybody that's ranking in the top two or three more than the Reds are in every one of those categories. But the bottom line is, is runs. All the rest of the stuff is just noise. They scored the most runs of any team in the league since the 23rd of April. And their pitching has been plenty good enough. It's right at an even four runs allowed per game. Now, would you like it slightly better than that? Of course you would. Two and two to count on Peterson. Straight up in the air, and this should be out number two. Well, if you have your phone nearby, we invite you to scroll over to Fox Sports Ohio on Instagram to relive great moments, get insights from some of the players. Follow Fox Sports OH on Instagram. David Hernandez, two quick outs. And now we'll face Matt Kemp, who singled his first time up, has since bounced to the shortstop, and ended the fourth inning on a pop-up to Winker and Wright. Now Hernandez in front of Kemp, nothing in two. Hernandez has been around for a long time. He is coming off one of his best seasons in the big leagues. He's been a guy basically in his career where he'll have two good years and then an off year. You know, have a good year, then maybe an off year, then two more good ones. Last year was a good one, and this is a good inning. One, two, three, he gets Kemp looking. We're off to the seventh. Reds lead 
Well, he says, yeah, it's a white ball with red seams. And he claims he didn't know the stat. That's four straight. That's four straight. Wow, oh, that's awesome. Um, that's great. <laughs> Don't act like he didn't know. I, I really didn't know. Come on. I swear. <laughs> I swear I didn't know. Uh, well, then five would be even better, right? Five would be better. Says he didn't know he homered in four straight games, and this just in five is better than four. Well, you're exactly right about that, Jim Day. And Jose Peraza steps in here now that the Reds have a two run lead to lead off the seventh inning. Pat Venditti now batting or pitching right handed against Peraza. Gets ahead now, one ball and two strikes. I got to tell you, Chris, with you having the baseball rulesacademy.com, the website, where you, you know, you want to check out rules and not just major league rules, but high school, college rules, amateur rules, whatever it might be. You have softball on there too or no? Uh, no softball okay. yet. I tell you, I think you ought to be the guy who petitions the league as Peraza swings and misses. Because I got to tell you, I don't think a lot of fans know that rule you talked about a minute ago. I mean, seriously, that doesn't seem like there's any equity in that rule whatsoever. Why is a batter allowed to do it and a pitcher can't do it? Well, I, I don't know, because maybe the pitchers are in such a minority. There, you know, there's 10 percent of the population is left handed. And only 1 percent of the population is ambidextrous. And oddly enough for Pat Venditti he, he's only ambidextrous when it comes to baseball. A lot of other things he does in life he does either right handed or left handed. Switch hitters are fairly common in baseball. But it all came around. This rule did anyway. After there was basically a face off in 2008. When Venditti was on the Mariners roster. And he was facing a switch hitter named Ralph Enriquez. And it, they each took almost 10 minutes switching sides. And you would have loved that inning, I'm sure, Tom. From the left glove to the right hand glove and the other way around. Meanwhile, Enriquez is standing in one batter's box and then moving to another every time Venditti decided to change arms. So baseball said finally, well, we can't have this. So that's how the way they came up well, with Well, you know ride. what? Then, then, then I understand it. So it's a fairly new rule. I get it. I hope you log on one of these days. Well, I mean, you you send out the email every day, and I get dialed in on on you know the rule of the day, or the week, or the week, and uh, you know what? I probably should, because I uh, I'm amazed. And believe me, I'm including myself in this guilty as charged. But I am amazed how many people are either announcing, but of course that's secondary to the number of people that are actually in the dugouts that don't know the rules. And I've said that about football for years and years and years. I've seen more guys screw up what they can, you know, throw the challenge flag for as an NFL head coach. And, you know, that, that's a rule where you can't review it. And We've talked many times about what happened in the postseason last year to the Washington Nationals. If somebody on that Nationals bench knows the rule, it might have been the Nationals playing the Los Angeles Dodgers in the league championship series last year because it, it, it wasn't even a debatable rule. They would have won any sort of a challenge to the call that was incorrectly or more accurately not made on the field. Correct. It cost the Nationals potentially that entire division series. Now some will say well that's not why Dusty Baker lost his job. I can promise you that once everybody realized that at least somebody on Dusty staff did not know that rule, that that had something to do with him not coming back as a manager. I mean you'd be naive to believe that. Well, I think that most guys in the dugout, bench coaches, managers, minor league managers, especially those that have been around a long time, they know the rules pretty well. But the rule book is very obscure. It's complicated. It's contradicting from one section to another. Not great. You know, it's not definitively written in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. So it's tough to learn them all. 
But what I hope for in, in my website Tom is that I save the, the fan the embarrassment of being at his kids game and arguing a rule in which he has no clue. And then only to realize later that the umpire was right after mm -hmm. So now that you're out of coaching it probably won't happen to you anymore. Well, I've already embarrassed myself enough. Scooter and the magic wand. Boy, I'm telling you what. That's another three hit game. He's had three hits in each of the three games of this series. Sounds like a children's series. So now Ben Diddy will change the glove again. You know, I played with a guy who was ambidextrous and pitched both ways in a major league game, not as effectively as Ben Diddy. But Greg Harris, you may remember yes, that I name do. From back in the 80s. Well, he had good stuff. Yeah, he did. He was a really fine right-handed pitcher, and he would always warm up before a game with left-handed, and, and they eventually figured out a glove that, you know, where you could use on both sides. They've got to be specially made, obviously. A three-fingered glove is what... Tonight is well, a 42nd game Venditti has pitched in. We brought up earlier, he pitched for the A's in 15, the Blue Jays in 16, and Seattle a little bit in that same year. I mean, he's not had a ton of success. His biggest problem has been his wildness. You know, he's, he's walked nearly a batter every other inning. There's a ground ball to third, but knocked down. And unable to make a play as Muncie, that'll be an infield hit. You know, what's interesting is, is, is they really don't hit him much. I mean, he's held major league hitters to a 241 career average. Lefties to 185. They score that an error on Muncie. So now he'll flip the glove around and go back to left handed. So here in this inning, we've seen right handed to Peraza, left handed to Votto, left handed to Jeanette, right handed to Suarez. Now back to the left handed delivery. Strike one to Shevlin. Shebler, the biggest hit in this ball game so far for the Reds. A three-run home run with the Reds down two one inning ago. And he hit it the opposite way. Talking about it, but 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 it really is just amazing to sit here and watch what Vendetti is doing. And can you imagine the amount of time and practice? It's hard enough to get to be a major league pitcher throwing just with one hand. To be able to do it with both. It's amazing. It, it really is. What amazing. a blessing, and I'm sure an incredible, incredible amount of work. You know, on every major league scorecard that comes out. Uh, up in the press box they have the lineup of each team and then they'll tell you you know what pitchers are available in different columns and they base them on left handers and right handers left handers on the left side right handers on the right side then you have the bench left handed hitters available right handed hitters available switch hitters available this guy's the only guy in the league <laughs> that is in the switch category as a pitcher the only one and one of the few ever. 
Oh, and two on Shevlin. And this one is in the left center field and a diving play by Hernandez to take away a hit. And more Cincinnati runs. Reds lead 5-3. Fireworks show on Friday. We've got a Super Saturday, a day-night doubleheader, and then Family Sunday. Catchy, exciting matchup presented by Cincinnati Bell. Log on to Reds.com. Reds five, Dodgers three. Last of the seventh inning. David Hernandez coming off a perfect sixth in relief of Homer Bailey. He'll be facing four or five and six in the Dodger batting order. Strike one to Bellinger. One of three, but one a solo home run back in the third. Tell you what we're literally seeing, and of course, you know, you, you can't judge in a three-game series, four-game series, what they have tomorrow. One player, and you know, try to make a determination on whether or not you think they have a good year or not. But I know one thing: Bellinger is a shadow of the player we saw come to the big leagues last year and just win the unanimous Rookie of the Year award. Yeah, I think the mistake that so many people around baseball make, and even front office people sometimes, they. They, they see the level that a, a rookie comes and hits the scene and has a great few months and thinks, okay, that's the bottom rung. We can only expect him to go up from there where you actually get knocked down a few rungs uh, in your sophomore season because they figure out what you're all about, where your holes are. And if you're a hitter with a big swing like Bellinger, they will expose it, and he's got to figure out a way to fix it. And look, it's not like the guy's having a terrible year. I don't no. want anybody to make it sound like, you know, that's what I'm saying here. I mean, he's got five home runs, got 18 knocked in. He's hitting in the 270s. He's got eight doubles. He's got three triples. So, you know, there, there's some things to like. But, boy, it just seems like if you could execute some pitches and have any command whatsoever, you've got a good chance to get him out. Well, 
if you look inside the numbers, and these are the kind of numbers that are hard to find on, on you know, most regular baseball spots, but every front office has this data. And Bellinger is one of the baseball's leaders in the number of swings and misses on fastballs that are inside the zone. So that's the kind of, you know, internal number that teams love to have and they put in a report for you. Oh, and to the count on Taylor who's had a good night. Oh boy, Hernandez wanted that call, didn't get it. Hernandez is so good at pitching at that first base side of home plate. I mean, he's a guy that just believes in using the entire strike zone. Doesn't try to overthrow his fastball. Swing and a miss, and Hernandez has retired the first five he's faced. That's his second strikeout. You know, there was a time he had a lot of fastball. Oh, yeah. So that tells you a lot about Hernandez being able to, you know, as you start to lose something off here, maybe gain something there, and he's made a nice adjustment as his career rolls on. I really felt the Reds missed this guy a lot the first month of the year. There just seemed to be a number of games where if you could have found a way to survive a sixth inning, Maybe sometimes a fifth inning. But they could have picked up two, three, four, maybe other wins this year. And he wasn't around, and they were using guys, quite frankly, that they were bringing up from the minor leagues that, at least at this point in time, were not ready to be in the major league. Well, I think they, they kind of changed their attitude a little bit. The year, a couple of years ago, they when they went out and signed as a free agent, Blake Wood. That was the kind of a move that they wanted to bolster their bullpen with. But Blake Wood didn't have the, the pedigree at the major league level that Hernandez does or that Jared Hughes has. Sure. So I think they've upped that a little bit. And with that, of course, came the uh, a dedication of more money. They had to sign Hernandez and Hughes to a two year deal. Uh, so it cost them more money on the out front. But I think they're going to get much better results. Danny Dyer went out to chat with Hernandez. Wandy Peralta is cranking it up in the bullpen. Yeah, I'm interested to see how it plays out here at the end of the Reds bullpen. With Bryson Iglesias presumably not available tonight. And with the number of games that he has pitched in a row, maybe he can go out tonight. It would be four in a row, I think, right? Yeah, it would be in, in multiple innings the first day of that streak where he went two and the extra inning went over the Mets. They got Peralta down there. You're already in the seventh year. I mean, ideal world, obviously. It's why they're not making the change here along with the Whitey Roddy matchup. But you'd love for Hernandez here to get through the six and the seventh. And then, you know, you figure it out based on the matchups. If indeed you don't want to use Iglesias or can't use Iglesias, you've got the duo of Peralta and Hughes to get your final six outs of the night. And there are other guys down there too, but more than likely, those are the two you're going to go with. How about that breaking ball? <laughs> Knee buckler there. Wow, where you have a hitter backing out of the batter's box the way Hernandez did right there. Watch his, watch his front shoulder. Ooh. to the count on Hernandez. So Hernandez v Hernandez, no relation here. But now David's gotten a little cute after getting ahead of the guy who's not known. I mean, he's got some pop in that bat. We right. brought up earlier that he likes the fastball. Yeah. And that's why they've been staying with the breaking ball. 3 2 pitch. And a tapper foul wide a third on another breaking ball. Mm -hmm. 
You got Austin Barnes standing in the on deck circle, but you also have some weapons on that bench tonight, most notably the duo of Yasmani Grandal and Yasiel Puig. Even though Puig's not off to a good start this year, he certainly is a home run threat. 3 2 pitch again. Got him looking, came with a fastball at 95 miles per hour. Two innings of one hit shutout baseball from David Hernandez making a pitch when it matters. All right, gentlemen, look forward to catching up with you here shortly and perhaps talking about what would be a fifth consecutive win for the Reds. Josh Fields, we saw him in the opening game of this series. He went one inning, allowed a hit, no runs. Fields has had a nice foul. major league career. He spent the first four seasons of his big league career with the Houston Astros. That was back in the days when they were they were losing 100 games a year. But he was always dependable, a workhorse guy. He is now pitching tonight in his 262nd career game. Young man that did his college work in Athens, Georgia, for the Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. now you might be interested to know that Tom Brenneman that uh, Jeremy Rehack the home plate umpire is a former walk on baseball player at the Ohio University Bobcats How about that three year player there with the Bobcats before he decided to go into umpiring Pennsylvania native right he is from Murraysville Pennsylvania. Well, Jay, he's on top of his game tonight. Well, he made and it every game. night, I'm sure. I'm sure he made his major league debut here earlier in the season on April the eighth, I think. And uh, what years did he play baseball at Ohio University? That I can't you know? tell you. He's, he's, 30, he's 30, 30 years tomorrow. old, so okay. he's he's in your age range. <laughs> what to be my son? <laughs> it was kind of an interesting way, you know, when, when you start researching some of the umpires, you find out that. You know, he was one of 12 umpires that were selected to be in like the, the short list 
and they went down to the Arizona Fall League and they were all being evaluated and videoed every day and he was one of the guys that came up to the top. So well, we well let a, me tell you something. You, you put K2. 12 guys in a room and one of them's from Ohio University. I can promise you they will separate themselves from the pack. <laughs> Now it might not be exactly what you're looking for. What do you mean? In the way they may separate. Yeah, they'll themselves. separate themselves some, somehow, some way. <laughs> no, good for him. I'm very happy for him. Proud of him. Yeah. A fellow Bobcat. I got to go down and say hello to him tomorrow. He'll say, I, I had no idea you went there. Who are you? Adam Duvall, two hits and three at bats, has scored a run tonight. Caught that off the end of the bat. Fields has taken forever and a day to prepare himself between these two pitches. Seemingly every pitch walking behind the mound going to the rosin bag. Two balls and a strike on Duvall off the end of the bat for sure into short left center and Hernandez has it for the second out of the inning. And we invite you to watch every out of market regular season game. You can do it at home. You can do it in the office. You can go. On the road, anywhere you want with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Two outs here in the eighth. Reds leading by two. And David Hernandez is going to bat. Huh. You've already used Blandino. But you have Cruz as a backup catcher, Herrera and Hamilton. I would imagine we're going to see Hamilton come in defensively into this game. If maybe as early as the bottom of this eighth inning. Now, Wandy Peralta has already, you know, been warming up for quite a while. And it might be a situation where we saw it the other day with Jim Riggleman, where they allow Hernandez to go to the mound, force the Dodgers to do what they want to do. If they let Austin Barnes back, I would imagine they'll let Hernandez face it. There's a sinking line to the right. He hit that ball hard. And then after that, the Dodgers are going to have to make a decision on what they're going to do in the number nine uh -huh. spot.
Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Dodgers coming to bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning with the Reds in front five to three. As we speculated, Billy Hamilton is indeed taking over in center field, shoving Shebler over to right. That was a game plan last night, didn't work so well. Hamilton will bat in the leadoff spot, and as we suspected, Jim Riggleman's going to have Hernandez take the ball to face Barnes here in the eighth, and Barnes does bat. And then depending on what Dave Roberts does with the second batter in the inning, which is the pitcher spot, will dictate more than likely whether or not Riggleman makes a pitching change. More than likely, he will. You've already gotten two innings out of Hernandez tonight. Although only 29 pitches in those two innings. That's not too bad. And he's been very sharp. Gasmani Grandal is a pinch hitter. And he's also a switch hitter. But of course, switch hitters are always better one way than another. His spread is not as dramatic in regard to the batting average, but it is quite dramatic in regard to the Thunder. All five of his home runs have come as a left-handed batter, so I suspect we're about to see the pitching change in left. Jim Riggleman just feels like, hey, here he comes. As soon as they announce Randall. What a job by David Hernandez here tonight. On a night where the bullpen is a little bit thin right now, especially your closer, Rysele Iglesias. And we don't know for sure that he's unavailable, but you got to figure more than likely he's not available. But what a terrific game from Hernandez. Two and a third innings of one hit shutout baseball does not walk a batter. And no runs. Well done, David Hernandez. action 30 minutes before the start of every game we call it Reds live brought to you by Ray St. Clair roofing of course tomorrow <laughs> Eastern time late afternoon start 330 Reds live Luis Castillo coming off back to back excellent outing be opposed by the left hander Rich Hill is off to a very slow start coming back off from injury <laughs> But Hill can be very good when he's on his game. So here's Peralta. We know about him. Very hard to hit, but has had a tough time throwing strikes. Peralta had an excellent game in the opening game of this series, and he was throwing strikes. Inning in two thirds, one hit, no walks, no runs.
Yes, Money Grundol, who has not hit a home run from the right side through the first month plus of this year. Two and two. Well, the good news about a two-run lead is even if he does hit his first right-handed, it doesn't really hurt the Reds all that much. It makes it a one-run game. So you want to get rid of this power as you can right here when you've got a little bit of a spread in the game. Extra inning south of here. Cardinals and the Padres in a 1-1 game in the 10th at Petco Park. They all pitch coming to Grandall. Boy, oh boy. Now, that's the one thing the manager can't anticipate. You called it perfectly, Tom, what Riggleman had in mind when he sent David Hernandez to the plate at the top of the inning. You know, your chances of scoring a run when you have two outs and nobody on, and you're down at the bottom of the order, somewhere around 7%, actually less than 7% based on the run expectancy matrix that are, you find out there. So that's why they let Hernandez go. And they, when the Dodgers decided to put a pinch hitter in there, that's where they bring in Hernandez. Great strategic move, I think, by Riggleman. The only thing that's missing now is this pitcher throwing the ball over the plate. Fastball right by the pinch hitter Kyle Farmer. Right handed batter. I am really surprised we're not seeing Puig in this situation. Well, base hit by Farmer. Shows you what I know. This guy puts the ball in play. I remember last night when Jim Riggleman took out uh, Austin Price. When Puig was announced at the plate and brought in Wandy Peralta, he did that because Puig has a big difficulty with left-handed pitchers. But we're going to find out how big that difficulty is because here he comes to the plate right now. Yep, batting for Peterson. And Jared Hughes is in the bullpen, but as Chris just mentioned, I mean, those numbers are what they are. For Yasiel Puig, a 200 batter, just seven for 35 against left handers. And here comes Jim Riggleman. And he wants a right hand. So Puig, a 200 batter against left handed pitching. Without a home run, he doesn't have a home run all year. He just came off the DL. Well, he's not much better against the right handers. He's yeah. hitting 203. Career wise, it's about 30 point difference. Weaker against lefties. But we will find that out. We'll find out what Jared Hughes has got. Wait, and Wandy Peralta, the mystery continues for this Reds left hand.
a single batter. Issues a walk and gives up a hit. Well, the Reds got to get Peralta straight because this bullpen has been lights out here of late. This game might belong to Hughes the rest of the way. We have not been told that Wyselli Glacius is for sure unavailable tonight, but he pitched. An inning to get the save here last night. In fact, an inning in a third. Or the final two outs, I beg your pardon. He had to relieve Garrett. He went an inning and a third the night before. The day before that, he pitched two innings in getting the win. And there's a laser for one and a double play will in the inning. Puig hit the ball right on the nose, but right at the third baseman Suarez, and an easy double play to get out of the jam. Wow. League in his career was four for four against Jared Hughes with two home runs. Four for four with two home runs. Yet Jim Riggleman brings Hughes in to face Puig. And most fortunate are the Reds there on a line drive right at the third baseman that ends in a double play. Wow. Well, changes for the Dodgers. We'll just tell you about them. Baez now the new pitcher. We'll start with him. Just tell you about the others. Farmer stays in the game to play third, and Muncy goes from third base to left field. I don't think anybody back at 12:05 in Cincinnati. He's going to worry about all that. And by the way, Grandall does come into the game, stay in the game after pinch hitting. And he is now the new catcher. Actually, there are even more moves than that. They have moved Barnes from behind the plate, and he's now playing second base. Well, they got all kinds of things going on. You talk about some versatile guys. We talked about Kike Hernandez playing every position this year except for pitcher and catcher. Barnes goes from behind the plate now to the Dodgers' second baseman. You know, you talk to guys who go from working maybe in the broadcast booth, and there have been a lot of them, that then go down onto the field and maybe become a coach and then later a manager. One of my old partners, Bob Brenly, did that. And 
But you know, you, you'll talk to guys that maybe are on the field. They'll come up and broadcast, and they'll go back down. Joe Torrey's a perfect example of that. He did so, you know, after initially managing with the Mets and the Braves. He went up to the TV booth for years and years with the Angels and came back with the Yankees. And I'll tell you, the speed of the game in the dugout is so different than when we sit up here. And when I look at all these changes that Dave Roberts just had to make, while your team's batting and you're trying to figure out, are we going to pinch hit for this guy? Well, what if they bring in that guy? We're going to pinch hit for that guy. Hamilton slaps it to the left side, and he's thrown out to begin the Reds' ninth inning. You better really trust somebody who's your right-hand man as your bench coach to be all over this kind of stuff to make sure you have the right guys that can play the positions as you're maneuvering through who you're pinch hitting for. Well, that's why you see most of the time, Tom, that if, even if the manager is, is hired and he's inexperienced, like there's a lot of new managers in Major League Baseball this year, for instance, you know, their bench coaches are, got, are grizzled veterans who have been around. Now, in the case of the Reds, you know, you've got a grizzled veteran there in Pat Kelly, the bench coach, but also a grizzled veteran as the manager himself, Jim yes. Riggleman. I mean, Riggleman, in my opinion, we've only seen him manage for a few weeks now, but he's the best field strategist the Reds have had since Jerry and Aaron. I, I mean as far as X's and O's during the game thinking ahead Aaron's a really good baseball guy obviously and I think that uh, you know there, there's a lot more to managing that's running the game. But Riggleman is on top of it. You know, you, then you think about Kelly, right? I mean, now you talk about a guy that's been through the wars. Yeah. He has spent 26 seasons managing in the minor leagues. 26 years, going all the way back to 1986. Actually, 83 in Niagara Falls. There's a base hit in the left field. He's managed in Niagara Falls for a year, went from there to Reno, Nevada, two seasons in Wichita, Kansas, one year in Las Vegas, to Rockford, Illinois, two years to Indianapolis, two years to Chattanooga, two years in Harrisburg, two years in Ottawa, two years in Syracuse, three seasons in Richmond, and then joined the Reds organization where he's managed in Lynchburg. He's managed for three years in Billings, Montana. He's managed in Bakersfield, California, double-A Pensacola, and this year the manager, his first season at Louisville before he just got brought up with a regime change at the major league level. What an unbelievable resume that is. That incredible. Is. He ought to have his own bus. Interestingly enough, he's got a son, of course, Casey Kelly, who is pitching in the Giants organization. He'll be pitching actually tomorrow in Fresno on Mother's Day, and Pat's wife and Kelly's mom will be heading up to watch him pitch that Triple A ball game, and then out to San Francisco to watch the Reds Giants series this week. And remember, he's had this job before. He was the interim bench coach, you may remember, for the big league club when Pete McCannon took over the year Jerry Naren was let go. Oh, and by the way, I failed to mention he has managed multiple years of winter ball. Nothing in one Novato.
every spot. And the Reds batting order has at least one hit tonight after that single by Jose Peraza. Base hit in the left field by Votto. Going on to second base is Peraza. Number three, Scooter Jeanette. And one more chance to hit a home run in five straight games for Scooter Jeanette. You know, we talked about Baez here the other night. You go back through the first four and a half, five months of last year, and he was as dominant as any reliever in the league. And then they'll tell you around these parts, all of a sudden, the late August comes around, and he has two outings where he is just lit up. Had a terrible September. And has just not been the same guy. Well, I'm wondering if one mile per hour on the fastball could be that big of a difference for him because he is down that or a, maybe a touch more from last year to this year. So instead of being at 97 and 98 like he was last year, he's at 95 and 96. Three pitch mix includes a slider, he likes that a lot. And also mix in a changeup. This guy had a 2.9 ERA last year and was left off the postseason roster. That's how bad his September was. Tumbling. I mean, think about that. Guy pitches almost 70 games for you. The league hits 225 against him for the year. And he doesn't make the cut for the division series. The league championship series or the World Series. Slow roller down to third. That's a fair ball. That's one. And the throw not in time. Uh, just barely making contact with that right on the end of the bat. Hustle right there by Jeanette keeps it from being a double play. Suarez had that infield hit when they brought Chargois into the game to relieve Stripling with one on and one out in the sixth inning. That was the decision of the night by far. Stripling had struck out 70 and not walked a batter. And for those of you that weren't with us, you know, look, the guy's only making his third start, and each of his first two starts were four innings. So. But it certainly wasn't a stressful night out there for Stripling by any stretch of the imagination. And things have not, could not have worked out any worse or turned for the worse than they did for Dave Roberts with that decision. Sharkwa came in, faced five batters, 
Gave up hits to four of the five and three runs and gassed in the other one on Stripling. They're now in the 11th inning down in San Diego. Cardinals and the Padres a 1-1 game. Colorado a rare shutout at Coors Field tonight. A 4-0 blanking of the Brew Crew. Cubs keep their winning streak alive. Giants keep their winning streak alive. San Diego. Trying to end the Cardinals win streak. And the Reds are three outs away from a season best five game winning streak. Baez still looking in and now backs off the rubber. to the count on Suarez. And just throws a fastball at 97 right by. All right, here we go, bottom of the ninth. Red three outs away from a fifth straight win. Minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance and buy a Toyota. For over 30 offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Well, a chance to nail it down with a save tonight, and those have been rare in the career of Jared Hughes. Boy, how fascinating is that, though? His last save of the four he's had. Came one year ago today with Milwaukee against the Mets. Boy, it's funny how those things work out. Seems like it, something like that happens virtually every day. Oh, 
So Hughes looking to try and save it for Homer Bailey. It has been a long time since Bailey has picked up a win. to go back to September the 27th for Homer Bailey when he beat Milwaukee six nothing he went seven innings of four hit shutout baseball that was the last time he won a game slow roller bare hand Peraza got him what a play my oh my Jose Peraza throws out Matt Kemp getting up the line this is a Big time play. Oh, you're not kidding. It's about one of the toughest plays the shortstop can make because they don't make that slow roll of play that often. But every time we've seen Peraza do it or attempt to do it, especially on the skin part of the infield, he watches that ball into his hand, makes a nice play, and gets that leading lady. And that's an important out here in the ninth inning. And you can see him say the words thank you, both Scooter Jeanette and Joey Votto screaming at him, telling him what a great play that was. Gosh, is this young man having a good start to this year? Sure is. He is really having a nice season. I know it's only, you know, what, six weeks, six and a half, seven weeks, but it you know, started over 12. Of course, there was a time that when Matt Kemp was at his peak of his career, he had been a step past oh, yeah. the first base bag. But you take advantage of what you can do, and that first out is a very important one here for Jared Hughes. 2 0 on Cody Bellinger. This is an interesting matchup, really, from a pitcher batter standpoint, because Bellinger is a good low ball hitter, and that's where Jared Hughes makes his money, down around the knees. So Jared Hughes knows that. And he's trying to feather that very bottom of the strike zone. He's missed down low three times. Well, you just can't walk a guy here with a two on lead. You, you just can't do it. If he hits it in a seat, so be it. And let him do that three and what? oh. I mean, that's the most unbelievable thing I've maybe ever seen. I mean, you got to be kidding me. You, if, if it's, you know, look, at the beginning of the bat, and I know he's trying to get on. They have the big shift against him. So you understand what he's thinking here. He's thinking, I'm going to get a 3-0 fastball right in the middle, down the middle, and I'm just going to push a bunt to the left side. But, man, 3-0? and Or he would have got a 3-1 fastball and probably right. a 3-2 fastball as well. I know, you know, he wanted it over here. Yep, but not there. Oh, my goodness. Well, Jared Hughes says thank you very much there. I mean, if he just squares around and takes his time, he didn't have to hurry. Because if he just gets it down to third baseline, there's yeah. nobody home. No, 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 what do you really, I, I'm curious, because the more I think about this, well, what do you think about that play? Because we get on guys for not bunning when they take like down on a, two I don't runs. like it on a 3 2, a 3 0 three count. count. No okay. way on a 3 0 count. Because we're not going to change the defense on a 3 1 count. Right. It just looks bad 3 and 0. Looks really bad. Yeah. It sure does. That's the problem. You know, the, the idea of it is probably not such a bad idea. But on 3 and 0 when you you get thrown out, it looks really bad. That's why a lot of guys don't like hitting 3 and 0. I had this conversation one day with Robin Yount, Hall of Famer for hours. And he talked about so many great players he played with felt embarrassed to make an out on 3 and 0 when you know you sort of have the pitcher not sort of you got him around the neck yeah wonder what Bellinger's thinking about over there I, I, and I sincerely mean that I, I wonder what he's thinking right now
Hughes has now gone three and two on Chris Taylor. I think the other thing, Tom, that, that sometimes people don't understand is that the energy of an inning when a base, a first batter base hit, it wouldn't be first batter, but I mean, when a batter gets on by a base hit versus a walk, for me, it's a completely different energy. And a soft liner caught by Peraza. Jared Hughes gets a save. And the Cincinnati Reds have won their fifth consecutive game. First time in over a year, May of last year. Final score of five to three. And another come from behind win. I mean, this team looked like they were in trouble early tonight. The way Stripling was throwing the ball and Homer Bailey was was hanging in there. But Shebler, the big home run in a four run six, and the Reds are winners again. Five in a row. Please remember to be respectful to our neighbors as you leave the stadium. Drive safely. Don't make excessive noise and please do not live. So we're going to. Get you to a timeout. Reds Live is right around the corner. And when we come back, Jim Day will be standing by with the hero, Scott Shevler, who had the big home run to put the Reds in front, and they win it 5-3.